This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we're dealing with a gas dryer that won't start. It does kind of hum, but it won't get going. So we're going to talk about some of the things that could cause it. This dryer is kind of funny. It had probably four things that had gone wrong with it. So a lot of things could have caused it to not start. But when we set it to go, we press, we just get a little bit of a hum. And then when uh, I opened it up and did some looking into it found a lot of things that were causing it to not go one is it was overloaded it had a bunch of blankets and super heavy stuff so i'm pressing it on the lid switch here and then i'm going to press the start button and i want to see what kind of effect it has i can see it move a little bit like it's trying to do it but the motor seems to be either overloaded or really dirty so i got all the stuff out and i found that there was some article of clothing or something caught between the tumbler and the back of the dryer and this could be part of what was causing the problem because this creates more friction between those two surfaces and that's kind of like a break it could slow down the tumbler and overload what the motor's doing so now that i got all the clothes out it does start <clears throat> but it still seems like it just goes for a limited amount of time and then it shuts down so that's pointing toward a motor that's overheating early and that could be that it's again dirty or it's got too much friction that's stopping it from being able to turn also I noticed the vent tube back here was crushed so that's not a good sign uh, that can mean that the lint builds up inside the cabinet and gets the motor super dirty and then the motor can't cool itself down and that can cause it to overheat and that can cause a problem. So this dryer already has a couple things gone wrong. So I'm gonna take it apart. I took out the filter. I'm gonna remove two Phillips head screws here from the top. I got it unplugged already. Once I get the Phillips head screws out, I'll take a paint scraper. You could also probably use a standard head screwdriver. I'm gonna push in on these tabs here. They're spring, spring loaded tabs that release and then let the top hinge up, it's pretty cool. So you can just hinge it up, get it out of the way. You may need to pull the dryer out away from the wall a little bit. Watch out for that for that top so it doesn't fall down on you. So I'm separating the door switch power connection. Again, make sure it's unplugged. I'm using a paint scraper to help separate those two. And then I'll remove a couple of screws or bolts that are holding in the front panel. So one here on the left, one on the right, and then what I can do is I can lift up on the front panel by about an inch and they'll pull it off of its bottom connection, two little clips on the bottom. I can get that thing out of there and then I can take a better look down where the motor is to see what's going on. So I got that out of the way. Here's the motor and I'm noticing a lot of dirt down there, a lot of lint. I'm noticing that article of clothing or whatever that is is caught on a screw. That was causing a lot of friction. So I pulled that off. And now I'm gonna press toward my right with the uh, idler spring and then pull the belt off of the motor pulley. And then, I'll stand back up, I can lift the whole tumbler, get it out of the way. Now I have really good access to everything inside the dryer once you get the tumbler out of the way. So I'm just taking a picture of that article of clothing or whatever it is, pulling it off of the screw it was caught on. And it turns out this was some kind of a drawstring bag. And that's always a bad idea to put in things that have strings because often they can get caught. I found some tooth, toothpicks or flossers that were caught in the dryer vent. So I'm going to remove those. This thing just had all kinds of dirt and problems. Actually, really good dryers, but this had been really abused by the owner. So I'm taking all this lint, I'm going to remove it. This is a huge fire hazard. This, this stuff had not caught on fire, but very often it catches on fire. I notice that this support wheel here on the left is not turning very well at all. It's basically not turning. And that's due to a bunch of lint that had built up and just in hair that had kept it from spinning. So I'm gonna work on that wheel a little bit. I'm removing a couple of bolts that are holding on this guard piece. And then I'll lift this guard out of the way. That's so I can see the wheel a little bit better. I'm gonna remove one little bolt 
that's holding a bracket on for the wheel out of the way. And then I'll end up just moving this wheel. There's a little clip that holds it. I'm going to pry that off. And then there's another little plastic uh, piece that's holding on the wheel. I pry that off with a little small standard head screwdriver. And then you should be able to just pull the wheel right off. And you can get these wheels Amazon.com appliance parts stores are pretty cheap. So I just spin it off. It's really hard to get off. And I noticed that there's a flat spot. So this wheel was not turning and that poor tumbler was just <clears throat> grinding against this wheel instead of instead of the wheel spinning. Again, creating way too much friction. So we had friction from that drawstring bag, we had friction from a wheel that wouldn't turn, and the motor's filthy dirty. Had lint all over it and all over the cooling portion of it near kind of near the back of the dryer or back of the motor so I'm going to clean everything up you can use a vacuum works great sometimes you can use a like a brand new um, paintbrush works good I'm just see these this orange thing is the cooling veins I'm going to clean those all up get all that lint out of there I'm going to use some electrical cleaner too to help clean up the motor. This is something you can get like at Home Depot. Hardware stores have this. O'Reilly's has it. And it's just called electrical cleaner. And you can spray it in, clean up everything. I took off the modular connector. Here's the stuff I use. I think it's really good. Made by CRC. And I shook it up. I put in my little tube here to direct the flow. And I'm going to spray in here and just using air pressure and uh, electrical cleaner get all this lint and junk out of here so this motor can breathe so all the electrical connections are really good and this will give new life to this dryer this dryer was on its way out it just really needed to be maintained correctly if you went back forensically and said what's the main thing that caused this dryer to fail it was that crushed vent tube in the back that made the lint build up, choke the motor, it caused that wheel to freeze up, caused too much friction. But if you went back in time and, and here it's all clean now, we're going to put that wheel on. We're going to put the little plastic clip to hold it on. But if you went back in time and you could get rid of that crimped vent tube, I don't think any of this would have happened. So you're going to put the support back in. Put this little clip that goes in on the support on the shaft to hold it on. And then there's a screw that we add in to hold it down. There we go. Put the guard back in. Goes into a little slot first. And then we hinge it down and put in two screws to hold it in. We put this whole thing back together. This dryer did great. Actually put in all the original weight that was in there, the wet blankets and all, just to test it. And it, it was able to do it. I don't advise putting in a lot of heavy wet blankets though. I think that's putting undue strain on the motor. If you fill your dryer tumbler about half full, that's good. If it's all the way full, that's too much weight. So I'm just cleaning all the lint off and the bearings on the motor are great so when you spin it it should be able to spin about three or four more times when you let go so those bearings are doing great if you spin it and you let go and it doesn't keep spinning the bearings are probably on their way out need a new motor so I'm making sure this felt seal goes up against the back of the dryer to form a tight a tight seal so the hot air doesn't escape and it was kind of messed up due to that article of clothing that had gotten stuck in there. So I got it back in position. I'm going to put the idler wheel back in. It has a couple of little slots it goes into. And then I'll pull the belt underneath it. And then I'll pull the idler wheel to my right so I can get the belt looped underneath it and then over onto the motor pulley. Once it's on there, before I assemble it, I want to turn the tumbler a few times to make sure that the belt will not slip off. I'm also looking at that new support wheel. It's doing great. So we've really limited the amount of friction now to the normal amount.
that's designed by the engineers. And we've got the motor nice and clean, got all that lint out of there, no more fire danger. I'm going to put the front panel on its bottom clips. So I have to lift up a little bit, about half an inch, and then let it set down onto the clips on the left and the right hand side. And then I'll add in those two screws that hold on the top of the front panel. I'm going to just do it by hand first. Kind of push this metal clip back into position and then put the screw back in. Go ahead and tighten that up. Yeah, this dryer is going to do fine now. Putting the door switch connection back. I'll hinge the top back down and then I'll add those two Phillips head screws in. Those are essentially holding on the top. And then I've got to treat the original cause, which is the vent tube. So I'm going to remove it. See how it's super cramped. I mean, we're only getting about 20%, 10 to 20% of airflow. We should get 100%. And I'm just going to bend it back. These, these are very pliable. Just reach in with your hand and bend it back so it's nice and open, nice and round again. And I'm just going to put it back in so that when the, dry, when the dryer is pushed close to the wall, it's not crushing the vent tube. Basically, I'm going to have the vent tube go more up. Before, it was down real close to the floor, but by going up, it allows the dryer to go in tight and the vent tube remains open. So now when I test it, it did great. So I hope this helps you with your gas dryer so when you have a no-start situation. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance.